All right, so check this out here. Up on top, I'm running a model with VLLM, and I provided a prompt here to write the Tower of Hanoi in Lua. Let me just repeatedly run this here so we can get an idea of the average throughput here. So I'll just repeatedly run this, and then up above here in a second, I should get some stats that we can refer to. Should be able to refer to how many tokens per second we're getting. I think there was a setup there. Take a look at that, 384 tokens per second. It's absolutely impressive. So once again, this is VLLM here. I'll show you the model that I'm serving with here. Running VLLM, I built my own copy of this because I needed to add support for the 50 series GPU. It's running on my new 5090. Just wanted to get an idea of the performance of this thing. It's absolutely impressive. And I thought, hey, if it took me a bit of time to figure out how to get this set up, maybe make a quick video and share it with other people. And so let's take a look at how to do this here. And then at the end, I'll come back and we'll run a few more scenarios here and generate some more text and take a look at the throughput. All right, so the first step here is to get your hands on a copy of the repository, clone that down to your machine. And then I'm sitting in the root of the repo right here. And the very first step I need to do, I need to get a Python virtual environment set up to be able to pull dependencies as well as install VLLM. And so to do that, I need to also use a compatible version of Python because VLLM specifies that you have to use 3.12 or older. You can't be using 3.13, for example. And in my case, if I take a look at the version I've got on my host here, it's 3.13. So I'm using PyENV here to manage separate Python installs. And if I just take a look at the versions that I have here on my machine, you can see I've got 3.12 already. So the very first step then is to run that again and specify the version I'm going to use for this particular project. So if I run that again here, I can specify I want to use 3.12. If I take a look at the status, you can see that creates a .python version file, which specifies the version then. And so now that I've set that, I can go ahead and create the virtual environment then. It will use that 3.12 version. Once I've done that then, I can source that environment. For me, I'm using the fish shell, so I'll do this here. And now, if I take a look at the Python version, and now if I take a look at the Python version, you can see I've got 3.12. So that is step one right there. Make sure you have a compatible version of Python. Of course, then once you've done that, you'll have dependencies. And in this case, this is a brand new virtual environment, so there's nothing really there. So the next step then is to install dependencies. But before you go about doing that, the first thing you want to do is grab a compatible copy of PyTorch. You want to grab a compatible copy for your GPU. And in my case here, in my case, I'm using CUDA version 12.8. So that was the key part of getting this set up. 12.8 is basically in a beta or a pre-release phase right now in the nightly builds of PyTorch. So what you have to do to get that installed here, so there's an index for PyTorch here, CU128, that's for 12.8. And so if I pip install from there and grab my dependencies, then I'll have what I need here. So I'll give that a minute. Now, if you don't know what version to use, when you're actually installing this, come out to the PyTorch website. Look for getting started. They've got this little table here that you can click through. So I, for example, want 12.8, and you can see I don't have that option here, and that's in the stable release. So I want to come over to Nightly here, and then I need to pick Linux in my case, and then I'm going to use pip, and then Python. All right, and then now you can see I've got an option for 12.8. And so that's where I got that string then to start the install of the packages using this CU128 index. All right, and then once that's done here, if I do a pip list again, there you go. You can see I've got quite a few dependencies. All right, so the next step here would be to install the dependencies for VLLM, but you don't want to do that yet because if I take a look at the requirements directory inside of the build.txt file, inside of here you can see this specifies torch 2.6. And actually, now that I've installed that here, to take a look at the version I just installed, you can see this is actually using 2.8. So you don't want to install these dependencies exactly as they are because then you will take away 2.8 and replace it with 2.6. And so what I want to do instead, they've got a script in this repository called use existing torch. Basically going to go through the requirements files and get rid of the torch dependency if you just run that then. So if I go ahead and run that then, that'll get rid of the dependencies. It's done now. If I look at the status, I can see the changes that were made. Basically, if I do a diff of that, you'll see it's removed the torch dependency. And it's removed that from all the requirements files. So the next step here would be to grab the other dependencies that we need for VLLM. So that's inside those requirements files, inside of build.txt. So if I do a pip install here, grab that build.txt file, go ahead and install that. And then I'm also going to grab another one, the common.txt requirements. 
This has got a bunch of other things that are helpful for testing out VLM, like transformers. All right, and then the next step here, just need to build and basically install the VLM package. Now, the one thing I'll do here to perhaps speed this up is to set the max jobs to parallelize the build process. And in my case, I can set that to improc. If I echo that out, you can see how many I've got here. So I've got 24 cores, so go ahead and use all of that. And then I just need to do a pip install here, make it editable. Go ahead and run that now. It's going to take a little bit of time. So go grab a coffee and I'll be back in just a minute. All right, so once that's done here, hopefully it was successful. Now I can go ahead and I should be able to use VLM here. So VLM, and then I could just first check and see if I can get some help output here. All right, so I got the help output here. So now if I come back over to my previous window here, just like I showed you at the very beginning of the video. And maybe this time I want to do a different model here. I could grab the 3 billion parameter model, which I don't have yet. So it's actually going to pull down to my machine when I do a serve there. And of course, if the model is downloading, that's another good sign here. But the key test is to make sure that you can run it. All right. And then once that starts up, you'll see some output here from the HTTP server. And so if I clear that out up above down below here, I can go ahead and run my little Python script again, the chat program. and. If I just provide that prompt over and over again here, I can get an idea up above what the throughput looks like. Periodically, about every second, I think it is, it'll dump out the tokens per second up above here. So I'll just keep going here so we get a good run at this. There you go. All right, I'll stop for now. That's good enough. You can see right there, 163 tokens per second. This is a 3 billion parameter model that is six times bigger than the one that I was just running and got, what, 380 on? So let's just round up to a 400. This one's six times bigger, and it's definitely not operating at six times slower in terms of speed. So that's actually pretty darn impressive. And again, these are basically FP16 models, BF16 technically, but that is not quantized. And still, it's running with this good of throughput on a 5090. That's pretty darn impressive. All right, and so now if I want to, I could kill this off here and run a different model instead. So I'll kill off my little chat program. I don't need that now. And this time... Instead of the 3 billion parameter model, I am going to look at the models I have cached on this machine. Yeah, I want one of the coder models, so I'll grab QuinCoder 25, 7 billion parameter, put that slug in instead there, fire that up, give that a second to start. And then while that's starting up down below, I'm going to open up NeoVim here. I've got my own little plugin that I made for completions. I'll zoom out so you can see this here. All right, so that started up now. If I just go into insert mode here. Look at that. I've got completions that are coming right out of the 7 billion parameter model. Up above, you can see the throughput, though it was a burst there, so I don't think it's going to capture much of metrics anyways. Yeah, two tokens per second. That's an average over, I think, a five-second window. If I escape there to bail out of that, I could come up here and try to complete here instead. There you go, different completion there. So I'm using VLLM here with my own plugin to NeoVim to generate completions here like Copilot would do for you. And I'm doing all of that running locally on my own machine, and it's incredibly fast. Let me just bail out of that here, come down here. Just incredibly fast to generate completions. Maybe it took one or two seconds there. So it's definitely a viable alternative then to needing to reach out to something like OpenAI, which tends to be a lot slower because you got that latency of remotely connecting over the internet. Instead, you can run a lot of models locally. These Quinn models are very impressive, especially Quinn coder models, the 2.5 versions. Take a look at those. Even if you have something like an AMD 6900, 7900, you can actually generate quite a few tokens per second and do some really neat things locally with something like VLLM. So check that out if you haven't already. And then I think that's good enough for today. I think that's a good stopping point. Hopefully I have more videos in the future talking about VLM. I know I want to talk about speculative decoding. That's a cool setup to get up and running as well. So look for that in the future. And for now, that's it.